Well, g'day, mate. My name's Dave. My name's Brad. Brad's got something caught up his nose. Yep. G'day mate, my name's Dave, my name's Brad, and this is the Travelling Brothers Cigar Review. Cue music. The music's already happened. Oh, I thought you were going to do an intro. No, that's, the intro goes before I say that. You've done this before, right? I should watch our videos. You, need, you should probably watch our videos. Yeah, probably. You might well, learn something. I, I got us something special today. You have got us something special today. You've got this uh, celebration 60 years, Rocky Patel. I don't, think we do, I don't think we do enough Rocky Patel on here. I, I always loved Rocky. I love Rocky too. So let's, think, let's, we're rocking this 60th birthday. We're I doing think, it together. Uh, I think the only Rocky we've done on here is actually the um, Edge. Yeah. Was it the Habano or the Maduro? I think it was the Maduro. Uh, I think it was the Habano. We did a 60 ring gauge battalion. Yeah. It was great. And... Um, and, you know, Rocky loves his labels. He, he either overstates his labels or understates his labels. Like, this is... You just saw me pull this off, and we've got a photos of them there. Completely covered, head to toe. Uh, Always get weird with a really good label cigar. Yeah. Why? It's kind of like you when you put on a nice shirt. Trying to hide something. <laughs> like, what's the trap? T. Uh-huh. Uh, but then you've got the edge, which has got nearly no label at all. It's got a tiny little thing around the foot. So, overstated or understated, but I do love this label. I'd like to have seen... Ooh, it, I think I'd oh, like oh, to have oh, seen oh, oh, a oh, photo oh. of Rocky on here well, somewhere. Well, 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 well. It's crafted with artisanal precision and care. Yeah. I think because it's a celebration for Rocky, I'd like to have seen Rocky's face on this footer wrapper. I have a question for you. Like, what? when we become rich and famous in the cigar world... Are you going to put your face on crap? Have you... Uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, are you going to, like... I, like, how conceited do you have to be to put your face on a label? Let's see what happened there. We made that label, didn't we? Mm. I just kind of hypocrited myself, didn't I? Yeah. Yep. Here you go. Here's a whiskey. Ooh. Here's a whiskey. And this is, uh... One of your all-time hatreds. Lismore. You know Lismore's a place in Australia? Isn't it Lisbon? No, Lismore. I know Lisbon. Well, there's a Lismore. Shout out if you're from Lismore. So in, tell us about Australia. your house. Huh? That's if you're allowed out of your house yet. What? We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. It is a product of Scotland. It's a copper pot distilled single malt. And the reason why I picked this out, and I always look for this when I'm looking at single malts, because you're a bourbon guy? Uh-huh. I'm a bourbon guy. But when I do want to have something nice and sweet and fruity and wonderful and toffee, you go with this. And when you're pairing, scotches tend to pair a little bit better than bourbons because they're more consistent flavor, I think. You think? I think so. Matter of opinion, right? Uh -huh. So listen to this. Are you ready for this? Light amber colored with a fruity nose. Kind of like you. Followed by flavors of toffee and a long-lasting sweetness on the palate. How do you think that toffee is going to taste with a nearly Nicaraguan puro? Well, interesting you say that because, you know, before we set the camera rolling or before we had our first outtake and um, we were smelling the foot of this cigar. I smelled the head. You were sticking this up your nose, yeah. But we were smelling this cigar, and the, um, somebody said to me the other week, it's like, oh, well, you're not going to learn anything from smelling a cigar. I said, I, you might not learn anything, but I think it's part of the experience. Can I ask you a question? You just did. I didn't have a choice. You feel like a victim? What is one thing that will always stick in your head from food? 
Are you just changing the subject because you were completely bored by what I was saying, or you just your mind just went like somewhere else? Sparse guy in the room. So when you think of eating a really good meal, when you come in the house, what's the first thing that catches you when your wife or someone's cooking dinner in the house? The aroma. You're right. The coffee smells marvelous. Mm-hmm. He wasn't talking about the coffee, by the way. And uh, but that's as a human yeah. sense, that is the one thing that it's a huge part of taste. It, it's the aroma is a huge part of taste. Uh, if you talk about that thing that people are losing their taste buds over, uh, taste sensations over, it's probably more they're losing their sense of you smell. Remember, you remember when we went on that twelve-hour motorcycle ride and got up and I said I can taste you by the smell of how bad you smell. But on the subject of aroma. This was milk chocolate. Milk chocolatey sort of finish. And if you went... It smelled like a Hershey really, Kiss. It's got a really, really big nail. You actually got a little bit of pepper with it as well. It smelled like a Hershey Kiss with some pepper on it. So, and we didn't talk about that. So let's get back to the cigar. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 And my story the other day was somebody saying, you can't tell anything about a cigar. You might not be able to tell anything about a cigar by what it smells like, but it definitely affects that first lighter. That aroma that you take in when you smell the cigar helps key up your taste. I disagree. I, I, I'm the weirdo who smells through the cellophane. You can't smell anything through cellophane. That's a matter of choice. <laughs> Don't smell through the cellophane. Just, yeah. It's biologically impossible to smell anything through the cellophane. It's except not- cellophane and dust. I do pop the cellophane, and I want to smell the cigar. Ah, if you pop the cellophane, like you open it up, I want to smell great. it. I want to know what I'm... I, I, I feel as though I have a sophisticated palate. And I want to smell it, because I can taste it. Okay, but you can't do it through the cellophane. You can open the end of the cellophane and smell the foot. That's fine. This is a high-quality sniffer. <laughs> it's not... Don't believe anybody that says that you cannot smell anything through the cellophane. I am biologically... Don't go in there and into a, into a brick and mortar store, pick up something that somebody else is going to smoke, and go through the cellophane. We should do a blind smell test. You can't smell through cellophane. We should do a blind smell test. We can do it. We should do it. Are you really thinking that or are you just pulling the piss out of me? No, I really think I can do it. All right. So, how are we going on line up here with this... Uh, with this it's Really nice, smooth so far. No pepper. Mm. I'm getting pepper. Mm. I'm getting anywhere. I'm getting mild pepper, but it's all nice dry cocoa. It's not a wet cocoa. It's a dry cocoa. I can't even say I get pepper on the retro hell. I know. I, the draw, a huge smoke production, which is typical of Rocky Patel. The wrap is really good. I, I thought being a box press that we'd be sucking a little too hard here. Well, actually, at no point, we've got two different cigars here. Oh, first for us. So we've got um, the, 60, the 60 box press Toro, and we've got the 60 box pressed in a 60 ring gauge. So what you're going to experience is going to be slightly different to mine. I'm getting a little burn up the middle here. Looks like it's a little bit of a swell happening this year. And the heat, the heat's coming down there. Oh, okay, so this is a good point. Let's talk about this. So, um, Brad's, has, it, has the flavour changed um, from light up? Yeah. Do you feel like when you're drawing on it, you've got to sort of suck harder to get what you the, the initial smoke that you were getting before? Like huge. Yeah. So, this cigar is experiencing a little bit of tunnelling. And um, these are new. They haven't been sitting in your humidor, have they? No, they've been sitting for a while. They've been sitting for a while. So it's experiencing a little bit of tunneling. This is the 60 ring gauge. And um, I don't know if we'll be able to see it there, but you can just see that it's got a little hole in there. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe we can get your camera and film it. And if we take that off, take that ash off. You're like a surgeon. You can definitely see there's a there's a hole there. Now the other thing you'll find is it gets hot down the down the cigar. Whereas mine, I can hold mine right up near the, the burn line. Brad's I can not quite get so close. About oh about there. 
So it's actually burning. So what's happening is it's burning down through the center like there's a, an open area that's burning quicker than the rest of the cigar. And that's going to change the way your cigar uh, tastes. The, it could be a humidification problem. Uh, a tunnel's really hard to, to deal with. It could be humidification. It could be the role of the cigar. Um, it could be how you lit it. Biggest thing if you've got a, a, um, a tunneling cigar though, Cutting you'll somebody. notice, well, you'll notice that the cigar taste, the, the cigar changes flavor a little bit and it becomes like it's harder to draw. Like you're drawing it, but you're not getting the same smoke that you were getting before. And you look at it and it's lit. And what's happening is just less of the cigar is burning. But each time you draw on it harder, you're actually making the problem worse because you're dragging that burning section further down the center of the cigar. So the best thing you can do for a tunneling cigar, two things. You can either put it down and let it go out completely and be patient, right? So you don't increase the tunneling. Then remove all the dead ash, including what's up in the tunnel, and relight it from around the outside ring. Because you'll basically have a donut. Relight it from around the outside ring. Or you can cut the end of the cigar off and try and relight it again focusing on the outside wrapper. Let's give that a shot while I banter on a little bit. So, yeah, I'm going to keep smoking mine, but we're going to let that one go out and see if we can work it, and we'll come back to it. You're like a surgeon. What, what are you going to banter about? on about? I don't know. What do you want to banter on about? Maybe, maybe we can talk about my holiday present that my friend gave me. Happy Hanukkah. I walk in today, he hands me a Hanukkah present, and he hands me a book. You gotta love getting books from friends, because that's, that's, that's the deepest gift you can give to somebody. That's the well, most, depends on what kind of book it is, really, is isn't it? A, it is a thought out, I'm going to provide this to you because I'm passing on some level of knowledge I want you to get from this book. There's something bothering me <laughs> that I need to pass on to you, and I think the most efficient way from an HR guy, is self-realization. I think that's what's happening here. So, uh... You provided me a personality book. You're referring, referring to me now as an HR guy. How to understand others by understanding yourself. Personality, personality Plus. Plus. Yep, by Florence Litow. Fantastic book. You'll love it. It's a great read. I'm concerned that this was a targeted purchase. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I just wanted to help you in your career. You, when I shot You've successfully, at the... congratulations, you've successfully got a promotion at work. I did. And, and now you have to deal with more people. In a good one. You don't want to be a DIC. S. A DISC. That's another version of that same thing. Are you, are DIC, you... disc. No, true. You, you disc. saw me there. Inadvertently. <laughs> you used my own story against me? I did. <laughs> you know, that was very demeaning, oh. intimidating, and condescending. It goes with my personality. You'll read about it in there. Well, I, I do have to thank you. It was very thought out and very uh, time appropriate. Um, when I'm done with it, I'll let you read it again. Okay. You need a refresher. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. What a really good cigar. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that smoking. My I'm really enjoying it. Um, when it's you're pairing beautifully with this Lismore. I'm telling you, I've got a little nap for this going. We just stopped to have a look and see if the cigar was out yet, but it's not. Often when you've got a tunneled cigar, you'll think it's out, but it's still burning right up in the centre. So just let it go out. Be patient. I'm being punished. Let it, be pa let it, let it go out completely. And uh, then you can remove that hot core and you won't increase the problem. Let's uh, wait for this. to. This is still burning. We're going to wait for this to finish and we'll come straight back. All right, so Brad's cigar has gone out pretty completely. Now, uh, it's a bit hard to show you here from this angle, but I'm just going to pull this in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gently squeeze the top here, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but you're going to find that that will break up the core that was burning in the center very gently. Remember, these are fragile beasts. You want to be gentle with them. And I'm going to tap it out and try and get that core 
that was burning out. So it's going to leave a hole in the end of the cigar. You can give it a bit of a tap. There it goes. You'll see it come out in chunks. Um, it's coming out now. And you'll see here, if we can hold that up to the camera, I don't know if that's focusing, I hope it is, you can see, I'll see if I can zoom in on it too, but you can see there's a hole right up the centre of the cigar that we want to get rid of that. Now, when you relight this, Brad, what you're going to do is you're not going to do it the way you normally do it. You're not going to do it the way you normally do it. You're going to, you're going to burn, let me show the people. You're going to burn around the edge of the cigar with your, with your nice lighter around the edge and try not to hit the center and then you're going to suck on it. Then you're going to burn around the edge and then you're going to suck on it. Because what we want to do is we want to get this outer ring lit but not the inner center. And this is going to let you burn it. It's still going to be a little bit different taste than what you're used to. It's not going to be too bad because you're going to learn a lot of the wrapper. And as it burns down, it'll catch up and it'll relight the center. And hopefully, that'll fix your tunnel. But look at that. Great big fucking hole right there. Bad at? Don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. Oh, he doesn't listen. Make sure you listen. Around the edge. Don't get the center. That's the way. Yeah, now you got it. That's good. Don't pull too hard on it because you don't want to drag it down into that hole. Just go gentle with it. Right? And just gently smoke it. So we're going to come back in a few seconds again. And mine, I'll tell you straight up, is burning beautifully. Uh, just unlucky with that one. It's a beautiful cigar. We're going to come back in a second when he gets his lid again and we'll give you some tasting notes. Catch you in a sec. Brad's tunneling issue has been repaired. Resolved. I think. Resolved. Somewhat. You might want to touch up around the edges and keep the edges burning. I swear to God, you judge me for how I smoke cigars. No, I'm trying to educate you. But, you know. Hmm. Oh. Don't be annoyed when people help you. It's a, it's a sure sign that you think you know everything. From your end or my end? <laughs> oh, I'm going to move that away because it's blown right in my face. That's what, That's she, what said. she said. So now that your tunneling issue's been... I'm getting a bit of apple. This is... Not what I would call like a mild citrus. This is this is mild citrus. I'm getting apple. Is it apple citrus? No, apple's not citrus. Okay. No, oranges and lemons and limes are citrus. Um, this is a really nice cigar. I think Rocky Patel's done a really good job on this one. Yeah, happy birthday to Rocky. Happy birthday, Rocky. You've done a really good job on this one. It's very smooth, very easy to smoke. It's got some nice milky, milk chocolatey notes to it at, at light up. Like a like a more high end chocolate. It's not like a. It's not like a. It's not like a Hershey chocolate. It's like a, like a good dive. A, a richer chocolate. Did you say richer to chocolate? Richer, richer, richer chocolate. Richer, 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 richer. richer. And and now I'm getting some fruity notes, which are really nice down through the center. Look, I I wouldn't hold that tunneling against that. It's just unlucky. It happens with some cigars. Mine's burning perfectly. Uh, I've got this. this I would go with the Toro on that. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of smoke production. It's a heavy cigar. It's mostly Nicaraguan, and I'm, I'm again. It's all when you smoke it on uh, my first cigar of the day, midday. But it's got a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, right? It does, but the the meat of it's Nicaraguan. Yeah, it's a little heavy for the middle of the day. I would say this is a great. This could be. See, a, I think that's because you've got the sixty. Because this is not too heavy for me, and you a, and I. Yeah. Generally run the same on that kind of level. Yeah, this is really nice. Go with the Toro. The Box Best Toro is my favorite size. And any cigar. From Davidoff all the way down. Yeah, absolutely. The burn is marvelous. The smoke production is huge. You can probably see that here in our, in our footage. The smoke production is huge. But it's not doing a lot. When it's sitting still, it's not doing a, a big burn. It's not like your money's wasting away. No. Like you get some... Manufacturers, they, it just great, pumps smoke out. Great wrapper on that cigar. 
this is really nicely done. I would uh, I would go and get a box of these. It is um, it's a 60th anniversary, so I'm guessing it's a limited edition. Yeah, I think they only they run it for the year um, or two. I mean, I don't remember how long the 50th ran, but um, I would get a couple of boxes of the boxes of these and put one away. I like them. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how the aging goes. What's the, the price point on these? I think it was around 15, 16 bucks. So, so it's up there. It's up there. In, it's kind of mid there. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. So it's um, it's not your everyday smoke. It's not your everyday. But definitely going well with this whiskey. Um, I've had a little bit of the coffee with it as well. And it goes well with that too. I'm not going to I, I can't imagine it changed very much from here. Well, I'm a little bit further down because you had to put yours out. It has changed a little bit through the center. Like I said, it's got more fruity. I wouldn't say it's sweet. But it doesn't have that dry... No dryness to this. It's really good. Oh, you, know, you know litmus paper that measures moisture? Like, it turns pink? I have some litmus paper over there. I'm just going to pan this off for a moment and see how dry... Because my wife... If there's, if there's a dry cigar, she can taste it. If there's any dryness to a cigar, oh, she can taste your it. your wife is the she's, litmus test. She's paper. the litmus test. Uh, and I'm going to test this because I think she would like this one. So we're just going to pause here for a sec because it's a bit hard to, to do this on camera. Just try this for me and tell me whether there's any dryness to it. It's a nice cigar, uh, but it's too strong for me. Well, you're it's, three quarters of the way yeah. through it. Um, um, but again, with a, a like a nice deep black coffee, I think that would take that edge off. Yeah. It. But yeah. I would not call that a dry cigar. I would just call that a strong cigar. Right. Yeah. That's, that's right. Fine. Yeah. Now, the litmus test says uh, that's my wife. The Lilith test. The Lilith test. She says it's not a dry cigar. She said it's uh, it's not dry. There's mild dryness to it, but but she wouldn't call it a dry cigar. She definitely full flavored, full bodied. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say strong, but definitely full flavoured, full bodied, but easy to smoke. I think, yeah. e easy to smoke. Not a morning cigar. Not a morning cigar. Not an not. early afternoon cigar. And we are, you uh, we are in early afternoon. Here. Yeah, yeah. And that is your first cigar of the day too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you pick the big one. Yeah. So you really you go big or go home. Go big or go home. Yeah. So I definitely race out and get some more of these. I will go and uh, try and hunt these down. Uh, I suggest you would too. Uh, it's a, it's well worth a try. Yeah. I think it could be a favourite. Uh, Rocky Patel, good job. Happy 60th. And uh, that's all from me. That's all from me.